GoPro is the perfect camera for taking beautiful shots underwater. But what settings should you use and what do you need to consider to get the best results? We'll find out in the next few minutes. I'm using a GoPro Hero 10 today, but almost everything I'm going to say basically applies to all other versions of the GoPro as well. In addition to the settings, at the end of the video I'll give you a few tips for getting the very best shots underwater. On the newer versions of the GoPro, you can set presets for different situations. For this reason, I will start by creating a new preset for underwater shots. This way, it will be easy to activate the right settings later on. To do this, tap on the icon in the top right corner of the presets menu and then on the plus. Now select video. We will take a closer look at the settings in a moment. For the moment, we confirm the settings. I use water as the name. Ok, now we will edit the preset water and I will explain in detail what you should change here. If you want to set up your GoPro optimally, you have to first think about which resolution and which frame rate you should use. As far as the resolution is concerned, I would generally choose 5.3K for underwater shots. The GoPro produces the best image quality in this resolution. The high resolution also allows you to crop the image without a significant loss in image quality when editing the video. Imagine for example that you take a shot of an interesting fish and want to enlarge it in post. Then it is an advantage if you have chosen the highest possible resolution. There is basically only one situation where I wouldn't use 5.3K. If you're using your GoPro for diving and you're diving relatively deep, it can get quite dark. And whenever there is little light available, you should reduce the resolution to 4K. In low light conditions, the GoPro produces a better image in 4K than in 5K. Choosing the right frame rate is a bit more difficult. Normally, I shoot all my videos in 25 frames per second. 25 because I live in the PAL region. In the States, that would be 24 frames per second. These low frame rates create a very cinematic look. This tutorial here was also shot at 25 frames per second. For underwater shots, however, I wouldn't use these low frame rates. A higher frame rate of 60 frames per second looks much smoother and thus creates a more realistic and natural look. And I believe that such a look is better suited for capturing the underwater world. For the PAL region, by the way, it is not 60, but 50 frames per second. The combination of 5K and 60 frames per second has a whole range of advantages. You get the best possible image quality, you can crop the image in post, you get wonderfully natural shots and if you want to use individual clips for a larger project, for example a travel video, you can create a slow motion of 40% if you create your project at 24 frames per second. Slow motion can be beneficial in some circumstances. It helps you stabilize the image and if for example you could only take a very short clip of an interesting moment, perhaps a very special fish, you can extend the shot. At the same time, the combination of 5.3K and 60 frames per second has a few disadvantages. For example, the stabilization setting high is not available, but in my opinion, this is not so important for underwater shots. If necessary, you can set the stabilization to boost. 5K60 then leads to relatively large files and if you have an older computer, you should also check whether your computer can handle this high resolution and frame rate. An important disadvantage of a high frame rate is that it is not so well suited for low light situations. So if you're using your GoPro for diving, as mentioned earlier, it can sometimes get really dark. In these cases, you should not only give up the 5K resolution, but also high frame rate. For these cases, I would recommend 30 frames per second. The image looks smoother than with 24 frames per second and the GoPro gets more light. In low light conditions, you should therefore use 4K 30 instead of 5.3K 60. Now let's look at the other settings. I use wide as the digital lens of field of view. There are hardly any straight lines underwater. The distortions of the GoPro Fisha lens are barely noticeable. In my eyes, therefore, there is hardly any need to use linear as this would also result in a crop. I know that some people like super view for underwater shots. In the case of super view, the GoPro uses the entire 4 to 3 sensor and then stretches the left and right edges to get a 16 to 9 image. This increases the field of view at the top and bottom. And basically, this is an interesting option. However, there is a lot of distortion at the edges, which sometimes look a bit strange in underwater shots, especially when the camera moves sideways. I leave the hypo smooth stabilization set to standard. High is not available in 5K60 as mentioned. As for the Protein settings, I actually mostly use standard as the bitrate for shooting underwater. I realize that a high bitrate should generally lead to better results. However, I have made several comparisons, also in low light conditions and with color grading and could hardly see any visible differences. But the files get much bigger when you set the bitrate to high. Since I often shoot a lot of clips underwater and some of them are rather long, a high bitrate very quickly leads to a full memory card. 
I leave the shutter set to auto. I set exposure value compensation to minus 0.5. This way you prevent areas in the image that are very bright from burning out. This can also happen with underwater shots. For example, when the water surface is visible in the upper part of the image or the sun is shining on certain subjects. As for the white balance, I have to say that the GoPro's automatic white balance actually works quite well underwater. Bear in mind that this particular environment places very high demands on the camera's automatic. In fact, in certain cases the result is not optimal. It can also happen that the automatic changes the white balance during the recording, which could ruin your shot. To prevent this, you could set the white balance to native. This fixes the white balance and the camera saves more information for adjusting the white balance in post. This means that you still have to adjust the white balance in post but you have more information available than with a normal shot. However, I cannot in good conscience recommend native as a general solution. It can be very time consuming and annoying to correct the white balance of each individual clip. I therefore recommend the automatic mode. The ISO value determines how sensitively the camera reacts to the incident light. The higher the ISO value, the brighter the image will be. However, a high ISO value also leads to image noise and therefore reduces the image quality. With a GoPro, the image noise is clearly visible from an ISO value of 800. It's true that GoPro has made progress here with the newer cameras, but I would still recommend a maximum of 400 for optimal image quality. For this reason, I set ISO minimum to 100 and ISO maximum to 400. If you dive into deeper areas and if it gets very dark, even 800 can still lead to an acceptable image. From 1600 on, the image is no longer usable in my opinion. I always set the sharpness to low. High leads to a very sharp image. However, it does not capture more detail. Rather, the camera digitally adds sharpness. The result doesn't look very professional or cinematic. You can also add sharpness at any time when editing your video. If you don't want to edit your videos and low looks too soft for you, you can of course use medium. As for color, you have three options. Flat, natural and vibrant. If you want to be a little more flexible and create the colors yourself, you can set the color to flat. Flat results in an unsaturated image with low contrast. However, a flat color profile can also lead to details being lost due to the compression of the video files. I therefore prefer natural undercolor. Vibrant, on the other hand, leads to the typical GoPro look and a very saturated and high contrast image. If you might want to share your footage directly without editing it, Vibrant might be the right choice. Apart from the settings, I would also like to give you some general tips for your underwater shots with a GoPro. Normally, you try to keep the camera as still and stable as possible to get a good shot. Underwater, this automatism seems to be suspended. There is always something new to discover. Fish also move fast, so you move the camera back and forth very quickly. The result is often a bad and shaky shot. Therefore, try to keep the camera as still as possible underwater and make slow camera movements here too. Using fins can make a big difference here. You'll be able to move much better forward without using your arms and you'll be able to move forward more smoothly, which will lead to much more stable results. As for GoPro accessories, I usually use a simple floating hand grip like this as a mount. This one comes with an accessories kit. It floats and the yellow color makes it easy to find in the water if the GoPro falls out of your hand. Of course, and there are also slightly better standalone versions, such as the handler from GoPro. You can also use a waterproof pole, which is more suitable if you want to capture yourself, for example. If you want to dive deeper, you should purchase an additional protective housing. With this, you can dive up to 60 meters deep. And you can also mount filters that give you better and more saturated colors for your underwater shots. For these and other accessories that are useful for shooting underwater, Check out the links in the video description. If you want to change the settings in the water, you generally have the problem that the touch screen cannot be used. However, certain settings can be adjusted using the front screen. To do this, press the mode and shutter buttons at the same time. A small menu appears on the front screen. Depending on the version of your GoPro, you can change various settings here. On the Hero 10, for example, you can change the preset. You should also remember that light is crucial for the quality of any underwater shot. You will get better shots with your GoPro in shallow water with good light than in very deep water with little light. Of course, depending on the situation, you might get more interesting shots in deeper areas. So let's recap the most important statements of this video in a few sentences. Use 5K for the best image quality and 60 frames per second for the most natural looking shots. 4K and 30 frames per second if there is little light. White as field of view. Hypersmooth standard. 
and a Proteon Bitrate Standard Shata Auto Exposure Value Compensation minus 0.5 White Balance Auto ISO Minimum 100 ISO Maximum 400 Sharpness Low Color Natural or Vibrant if you want to share your videos directly Also make sure to keep the camera steady use a good hand grip that floats and don't forget that light will be the deciding factor for good shots even when shooting underwater And that's it for today If you found the video interesting give me a like as feedback There will be many more GoPro tutorials So stay tuned and see you next time